I think we have a question and answer session coming up. Uh, may I ask all the speakers from before to come on stage one more time? One, two. Thank you. Now, this is your opportunity. You can ask the questions. Anybody has any questions to anybody? Over there on the left. Yes, please. Yeah, I think that's the only way to do it, right? Unless you have a microphone over there. Uh, hi, I'm Jerry Puchlik, um, architect in Los Angeles, California, and this question is for Dr. Emanuel. Um, have you done any research uh, of creating uh, those instruments uh, for patients with dementia and Alzheimer's? Um, this is a very good question. In fact, uh, we're now doing another project uh, called Aging Playfully and specifically for that. So we've, um, we work um, with Age UK, which is uh, a national UK charity, and they have support groups of people with onset dementia. And through a number of creative workshops, what we call core design workshops, one of the outcomes that have come through this process is a plug and play uh, musical instrument, because um, I assume you work with people with dementia as well, so one of the things you know is they, they really enjoy a tactile uh, objects touching elements and making. Uh, so we are in the process of developing um, um, a portable uh, toolkit where you've got plug and play uh, physical components with electronics embedded that will allow you, depending on how you bring them together, to create different musical instruments and play different music. Um, one of the things we notice in the workshops is that people, they even um, male patients, they will engage in, in playing music. Um, a lot of them will, will start singing and it will involve anyone in the, in the group. There's a little follow-up question to that. Their attention span to using an instrument, was it quite some time, was it just a few minutes, or did they go on for quite some? This is, this is a very good question. In fact, we'll be, um, well, we'll be doing the workshops and they will create um, um, a number of artifacts. At the end of the workshop, we'll show them what they've done. Quite a few of them, they would be astonished, saying, did I do that, really? Uh, but what is important is they would retain the very positive uh, feelings, and they would go back home and the, their carers would uh, report that they have um, this uplift mood when they went back home. In terms of the instruments, uh, there were, um, in one session, about 30 minutes, the other one was about an hour that, that they engaged. But what was important and what they wanted is each time to bring new materials and to actually be involved in making. Yes, please. Questions for Andrew Marks. Um, I'm wondering what your next steps are in developing the, uh, the benchmark. Are you actually going to embark on, on trying to draft such a document? Because you've, you've now done the process and the things that should be considered. So where are you headed now? Uh, we're actually ahead of that. Uh, we're in the second phase of writing the benchmarks for the Singapore um, Health Authority. Uh, the first phase was the main MEP sections, electrical, mechanical, um, uh, we're now onto the fire alarm section, some of the ELV uh, data. Um, uh, Singapore, uh, Singapore government's actually been really proactive uh, in the past couple of years. Uh, they, they're going through um, major impetus in, in developing their healthcare system. They've got a, a massive bed shortage. Um, so they're building a lot of hospitals at the moment. Uh, we're currently in the middle of designing a 1,700 bed hospital. There's a, another one that's just started the design process, which I think is 2,200 bed hospital, which for such a small island is, they're big places. 
Um, so they, they knew these projects were coming down the line, so they started developing their guidelines a couple of years ago. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of what I talked about is what we've learned from working with the Singapore government. Um, we've also done a little bit of work with the Malaysian government and uh, the government of the Philippines as well, because um, they're also very interested in developing their own benchmarks. Um, as I said, each country has its own health system, has its own way of doing things. Um, although the HTMs and, and ASHRAE guidelines are very good at prescribing the, the design standards as far as <coughs> excuse me, um, the electrical and mechanical requirements, they're not, they're not very good at incorporating cultural requirements, um, uh, specifically in, in areas like Singapore, uh, where it's highly specialised. Yes, here in the middle. It's coming. Thank you. Uh, this is a question for Dr. Kane. Um, could you elaborate a little on um, how you're going to validate the situated digital methods that you, you mentioned towards the end? As an architect, uh, spending copious amounts of hours with users um, designing facilities. Um, it's interesting to see how few actually understand the drawing process and how few can imagine visual uh, planning tools and so on. So I'm curious, and we're, we're developing our own digital methods for getting over that, so I'm very interested to hear how, elaborate a little bit more about the methods that you used and also how you're going to validate them because of course if that evidence exists, then it's easier for us as practitioners to take that to a client and say, well, perhaps we can do this a little differently. Okay, yeah, I can answer that. So um, we had a computer scientist join our team about six months ago whose, whose job was entirely to validate our digital kiosk. And the way that we did that was to run lots of experiments in the university basically to understand more about how people use the device, how they understand the interface, um, and we also compared using that device with asking the same questions um, using paper. Um, so that research has now been published in three different human-computer interaction conferences, which are happening, um, I think one's this week, there's another in China, there's another one in Germany. So I can provide you with the, um, the references if that would be useful. But it has been yeah, fully validated now. Um, good afternoon, uh, Jeff Abbott from South Africa. A uh, question for Andrew Marks. Um, just to, uh, um, I wonder to what degree you've, you've looked at the issue of affordability uh, and funding in, uh, across different countries. Um, just by way of, uh, sort of context, uh, I've been looking at, at issues in Africa in a slightly different context, but um, the... Uh, Health funding is, can be related to uh, GDP per capita. And if one assumes, roughly, that 5% GDP is what is spent on health, uh, one gets a range from about $15 per capita up to about $1,000 per capita in Africa. And that's a tremendous range. And I just wondered how you'd looked at that in terms of uh, looking at uh, a guideline issues. Um, to be honest, we hadn't looked at the correlation um, with the amount of healthcare expenditure um, by, by the governments that we've been working with. Um, our development of the benchmarks really started because we were, we were approached to develop them by particular Southeast Asian health departments. Um, so, so that's where we've come at it. We haven't sort of targeted it in the sense of looking at, at healthcare spending in general and where these kind of benchmarks would be required. Um, I think within Asia generally, and that's, that's where my recent background is, um, there is, there is a, a, a large diversity in, in how much is spent on healthcare, and that's dependent on the type of systems. Um, Indonesia has just changed in the last couple of years. They've gone to a more um, national health system as opposed to a, a very basic national health system with, which is supplemented what mainly private. They've, they've tried to put in a, a government health insurance scheme which is therefore 
meant that the government's putting a lot more money into their healthcare system and a, a lot more money into their hospitals. Um, Singapore are, are spending a massive amount of money on their healthcare facilities. Um, Malaysia are starting to do that as well, although Malaysia rely a lot on the private sector. Um, so, yeah, there, there's, there's a very much a, a diversity in that throughout Asia as well, but it's not really something that we, we'd looked at when we were doing this. Any other questions? Any hands up? Oh, I cannot see you. 